In this video, we will discuss the design of simple connections. We will use our basic knowledge about normal stress and shear stress. We will also discuss what factor of safety is and how to use it in our designs. Normal stress is defined as load divided by the area. So if you have a bar, for example, in our case, a force is acting at the centroid, and we assume that in the cross sections of the bar, there is a uniform stress distribution. And this normal stress can be calculated by force divided by the area. Similar to that, the shear stress, if you have stresses acting in the plane, you have a shear surface and the shear load. If you take the shear load, V, divided by the area, you find the average shear stress. And on the shear surface, as you see, we assume that there is a uniform shear stress distribution. Using this information, let's try to make simple mechanical design, especially connections. We all know that design engineers do calculate the normal and shear stresses, where for the critical sections in their design, and sometimes they try to find a suitable material. Sometimes the material is given and the dimensions for the design is sought. In each case, the maximum acting stress in a component, that is the stress allowed, the allowed stress is the maximum acting stress, must be lower than the strength of the material. The strength of the material is also called the failed stress of the material. So the ratio of the strength of material to the acting stress is called the safety factor and this factor must always be higher than one. As you see, for a safe design, failing stress, normal stress, failing shear stress, that's the strength of the material, must be higher than the acting stresses, allowed stresses, and the ratio is factor of safety. The factor of safety is a measure. How much an engineering system can withstand the stresses above the allowed loads? Well, you have allowed uh, an allowed load of 100. So how much above this load can, be with, can this system withstand? For example, if it can withstand in exceptional condition 150, then you have a safety factor of 1.5. The factor of safety, is, as you can imagine, is related to the safety of the people. And uh, by choosing the factor of safety high, then you can reduce the risk of damage. But you must also think that if you take your safety factor too high, this will increase the dimensions or the materials cost and, of course, the cost of the structure. As fail stress, we have to take for brittle material the tensile strength, for ductile materials the yield strength, and for dynamic stresses we can take the fatigue strength. So the fail stress depends on the material and also on the loading condition. For example, in a ductile material, we usually take the yield strength. And if the yield strength of a material is 240 and the maximum acting stress or allowed stress is 140, so the factor of safety is 240 divided by 140, and we have a safety factor of 1.7.
Depending on the risk of injury, or also the risk of death, as well as depending on the financial loss, different levels of factor of safety can be taken. So, but for very many structures, for critical structures like lifts, like pressure vessels, you are not free to choose the safety factor. There are standards or codes, and these critical structures are designed according to the standards where the safety factors are predetermined. Let's make a few simple connection design. Okay, we have a tension member, we have a load F over here, and we wonder whether there will be fail in this section. We know the load, we know the area, and the acting stress is F over A. What about the allowed stress? The allowed stress is sigma allowed, is sigma fail divided by the factor of safety. So we know that the sigma acting stress must be lower or equal to the sigma allowed. And so in this case, you can determine A, which is F over A, you can determine A by a simple calculation F over sigma allowed. You see this in a clear written form. F over A is your sigma, must be equal or lower than the sigma allowed, and this value is sigma fail divided by factor of safety, and the area of this section must be minimum F over sigma allowed. So you can, using this equation, you, cur you can determine the diameter of this section. Well, a shear loading, a cross-sectional area of a rivet. So we again have a load, okay, and a connection contains a rivet, and this is the surface where shear stresses are acting. As we did before, force divided by the area, this time it gives the shear stress. This shear stress must not exceed the allowed stress, which can be calculated by the fail stress of the material divided by the factor of safety, safety which I choose or which is given. So with this help of this relation, I can calculate the minimum area of this rivet. Another simple connection. So we have a rod. Diameter is D. This rod is embedded in a wall. You know, this is my wall. And imagine that this is concrete. And so this part is embedded in the wall. So I pull with the force D with the force F, sorry, and I want to be sure that this rod will not pull out, will resist the pull out. Well, if I apply this load, there will be sharing. Where is it? Where is this shear? You see the embedded area is here, and this dark surface is in the wall. When you apply a force F, well, in the, on this area, we will have a shear stress. The, she, the area in the, or in contact with the concrete wall is, if the diameter is D, the circumference is pi times D, and this is my length times L. This is the area of this dark area. Then what you can do is to calculate the shear stress. 
shear stress F over A, force divided by the dark area, must be lower than the allowed stress, which is, as we did before, sigma fa tau fail over factor of safety. And so you can determine with this simple calculation the length which must be embedded in the wall in order that will be no pull out. For this, this is not the fail shear stress of the material. This is the fail stress, shear stress of the connection between the rod and the concrete wall. You know, if this shear stress is exceeded, then the connection will be lost and we will have a pull out. This will depend on many things. You can, well, apply a glue, you can make mechanical, let's say, uh, grooves in order to increase the stress and so on and so on. Here we have a last question. A wooden part, that's the yellow part, and the thickness is 30 millimeter, is subjected to a tensile load 20 kilonewton. So we pull out here. The wooden part is not round. It has a rectangular cross section, and this rectangular cross section has a width which is B, and the thickness is 30 millimeter as given here. Well, you see the question is, determine the minimum dimensions of B and T to avoid failure. First, let's think well, how failure can occur. We apply 20 kilonewton and here in this section we have a cross section B times 30 and in this cross section failure may occur due to tension. So we do our calculation. We have a force 20,000 Newton and the area is A times B. A is given. B is what we are looking for and this stress must be lower than the allowed tensile strength of the tensile stress for this material. The allowed tensile stress is not the fail strength of the material. Well, it includes the factor of safety and if you take the fail stress divided by the factor of safety, we define it as the allowed stress. So, sigma must be lower than 15. So if we take out the dimension B and do our calculation, we find that B must be minimum 44.4 millimeter so that no failure due to tensile rupture will occur. Another possibility is the shearing of these surfaces. You see here, so if the thickness T is not enough or too small, so we have here, as you see, we have here areas. These areas have a thickness T and a, a the, the second dimension is 30 millimeter as given. So, in order to avoid shear, we can make the following calculations. We take the force divided by these areas. You know, we have two areas with the dimensions of A times T. A is 30 millimeter and T is what we look for. So this shear stress must be lower than the allowed shear stress for the wood. 
and this value is 4 megapascals and if you take out the t this thickness is found as 83 millimeters okay with this problem we finish this video in this video we tried to make simple connection designs with our basic knowledge of normal and shear stresses. Thank you for listening.